and we are back at the election night watch party here at local bar and kitchen. You're here with the Pittsburgh Current as well as our friends at the Incline, and we're watching election results come in. We're talking about election results. Uh, I would jo normally jokingly say we're going to go out and make and vote some more, but you know, God knows there'll then be a, a, a senatorial panel about that. <laughs> a couple of things I want to update you on. Uh, first, I want to talk about the uh, I want to talk about the Children's Fund referendum here in Allegheny County um, with just about uh, I think about 17 per I'm sorry 32 percent of the votes uh, in that fund, that that vote is is almost 50 50 it's uh, 50 49 uh, there's still a long way to go on that later in the broadcast we're going to have Allegheny controller. Chelsea Wagner come in and we'll talk about that as we did on our podcast earlier this week. Um, the other race I want to talk about is uh, in the 17th Congressional District between Connor Lamb and incumbent Keith Roth as well. Connor Lamb is also uh, an incumbent uh, coming from the Tim Murphy seat. Um, right now, Lamb has a pretty handy lead uh, over Rothfuss. Um, 29, 62% to 37%, and that's with 23% of the votes tallied. Thank you, Haley. And so that's that's one of those seats that, again, Tim Murphy uh, forgot to practice what he preached on his uh, clean living, was forced out of the House, seat up for grabs. Connor Lamb won in a Republican area, and I think that that was the first early kind of bellwether that that we were going to see some potentially see some changes here in the midterms. Um, after redistricting was struck down, he comes over um, and he takes on the most uninteresting human being on the face of the earth, Keith Rothfuss. And um, that one, like I said, 23% of the vote, it's 62% uh, Lamb and 37% Rothfuss. I have a guest with me here. Chris Basher is from the north side. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about the election, but... Uh, Chris had an experience today voting, uh, well, when he went to vote, and it's actually some uh, some things that I've seen uh, different people um, posting pictures about all day. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what happened to you when you went to vote this? And it was later this evening, correct? Uh, yes, it was, Charlie. Uh, great night, <clears throat> great night tonight. Um, I ended up going over to my polling place, and little did I know it had it had moved. Right. And I get there, I work late at the time. It was about seven thirty. And panic starts to hit him. Right. You know? And the sure. last thing I want to do in this election is give up. Right. You know, it's very easy. Sometimes things don't go your way. You know, I got on PA.gov. I was able to uh, put my address in there and right. get, get the street location. So lucky for me, uh, it was in walking distance because I was getting really worried about the time. So I walk over there and I'm looking around. No signage, nothing. I just keep looking, and there were these two cones that kind of had a door propped open. And I walk that way, and there's some light emitting from the door. And I go, this is strange. And then I see on the door, but it's opened, the sign that says polling right. place. So it wasn't until you actually went into, you actually breached the door, bre right. breached the doors. You went into the to the building you, is when you first saw that it was your polling place. Correct, correct. So did you ask anyone there? Did they give any reason as to why... There was no notice given, at least as far as you knew, no, there was no notice given. Yeah, correct. Um, I didn't receive anything mail-wise or, or anything like that. I was very caught off guard. Um, I was so lucky to have found it and to be in there. And it was basically a hallway with, you know, three little, little areas to vote at. Right. And, and you actually turned into a sign, correct? You, you hung around for the last sure. 20 or 30 minutes. So after that experience, I was, you know, a little just caught off guard again. And I had finished up and I had stepped outside. And you kind of see some vehicles driving by slowly. And I know with the address, it's very vague. And it was a huge building. And it was literally a side door in a hallway. So I stuck around and approached these these people right. and told them are you here to vote and they said yeah do you know where i go so i was able to direct them there and i just kind of hung out until like eight o'clock right so when you see something like that what do you what do you initially what's your initial thought what like what do you owe that to initially do you think it's it's just a bad system that's maybe not being uh tended to and the word's not getting out i mean 
I mean, you can't imagine that, that people are trying to keep polling places sure. from folks. But, but what was your thought when you first? I mean, for me, initially, I was a little disappointed, to say the least. I think that this is definitely an election that a lot of people are, are very interested in. And to see the amount of people, even at work today, yeah. hey, did you vote? And see how many of those stickers people right. had on. And I was like, no, you know, I'm going to do it right after. I know where I'm going. And <laughs> I'm just thinking to myself, I'm going to have a story for these people tomorrow. Right. <laughs> and, you know, it's tough because we live in such a strange political environment yeah. right now. It's almost hard not to think there was some, something involved. Right. But for me, I just think it was just a, a lack of organization, yeah. to say the least. Let's talk a little bit about the times we're living in in politics. Sure. So... Um, you're 32, you told me earlier. Yeah. So um, I don't do math, but that would have made you four years younger in 20, or two years younger in 2016. Sure. Um, were you, taking me back back to, to, to that day, were you, are you someone who's always been into politics? Was that something that you, were you excited about that election? Were you? You know, I remember the first time I got to vote and it didn't go the way I expected. Right. And I. I remember being in tears. I was Do you remember years who old. was the first candidate when you? Yeah, it was uh, it was Bush, oh. and it was the, the second running of that, and it was 2004. And I just I, I had such you know you're you're that age. You're like oh I'm, I'm I can't believe you know being 18 actually yeah, getting the vote absolutely. for the first time. That's kind of neat. And I remember talking to a friend of mine who didn't share the same political views as me, and he kind of laughed at me, you know. And I remember being so hurt. And I said to myself, you know, at least I showed up right. and at least I voted. And from there on, I just thought to myself how important it is every time. Going back to 2016, I honestly thought, and to just put it out there, uh, you know, I thought Hillary had it. Sure. I was like, there's no way this is going to happen. And it was almost that same striking feeling of disappointment and... For the younger people I know and everybody else I've been talking to, it's like, you know, no matter what, never think that it's going to be a shoe and win. Right. Or, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go in, I'm going to vote, everything's going to go my way because it doesn't. And I think that's how politics are, you know? Right. And so what was your, what was your level of, um, I mean, it obviously I don't, you don't strike me as somebody who would have a low level of engagement anyway. But... Is this something that you could even find like almost like another gear for when you're coming into the midterms? Sure. Uh, my father, he was very politically driven. I mean, he would always let you know how he felt about things. So I grew up in a household that was very much like know, know your feelings and express your feelings. Right. And it was never like vote the way I vote or feel the way you feel. It's right. like there's always an internal voice in yourself yeah. and find that and kind of, you know, ride that wave of emotion and I watched this uh, this video on Twitter of Barack Obama and yeah. it was the seven reasons you know that people kind of give why they're not going to vote right and to go on that point one of the things was oh, I'm not sure about the candidates and he said well well Google literally yeah. if you Google that candidate you can find out anything their view on climate change their view on you know same-sex marriage, anything like that. It's right. so easy to find out. And I think a very strange thing about our time is we live in an era where technology gives us all this information right. at our fingertips, and sometimes we're too complacent to use it. Right. And that's the thing. And then, of course, unfortunately, we have other folks who are on the Internet reading the complete wrong things, and yeah. then... You know, they also, they have an equal vote. They have an equal shot at it, too. And I think that is a, a way that with that technology and with all that power at your fingertips as far as what you can find out, there's also a way to use that to another party's advantage or against you. And um, it's all about being informed, you know. Yeah. Ne never just take the first thing and read it and say, oh, that's the truth. That's what it is. Right. If I were to put you on the spot and ask you, one thing from the past two years um, that you'd like to see change after tonight, what would that, what would that be? I think regardless of party, um, going back to when I was talking about Bush and, and him getting reelected and how that hurt me, um, 
I never saw the level of just separation and division yeah. in this country. And, you know, that was, that was 14 years ago now. And you look back on that time and you think, gee, so much has changed. And it's almost changed for the worse. Right. You know, and I think now we live in a time where it's, it's more acceptable to be closed-minded and unaccepting of other people. And that hurts a lot. Right. And I think, I think a lot of people, and I'm not going to say other people and pretend that I'm not one of them sure. most of the time. Um, when you see, well, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever call myself a moderate Democrat, certainly a little farther left than most. But when you see things that go on, especially when we saw them go on the Donald Trump campaign, yes, it's almost like there was a feeling, at least for me, all right, I got to see how far left I can go because let's just either, maybe, maybe we'll see just how ridiculous the extremes on both sides are and I'm hoping that we balance out at some point because I mean at the state level at the federal level we're not going to get anything done until we do no and I totally agree with that and I think that you know with that being said it's definitely brought a lot of the extreme sides right to to the parties and you know I think that it's kind of it's almost scary that we live in a time where you need to kind of really push your views and your values almost to those extremes because, unfortunately, th things are a lot tighter and a lot different than they were a decade ago. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, what's the what's the best case scenario for you? Do you think tonight? Tonight, I think you know I want to see a wave of blue. Yeah, and I mean. It would be just paramount to see that yeah. happen. I think, you know, some of these cases, you know, it's going to be hard. But one of the big ones I'm looking at is Cruz. Right. And I think we're all kind of eyeing that. Yeah, and, and it's, I, it's a close. I haven't seen it in a few minutes, but yeah. it's it's close. It's, it's one of those races that Don Shalala has already, has already won in Florida. That, right. I think that's where that race has been called. So the pickups are there. Mm -hmm. So at least early on, the pickups are there. So... It'll be interesting to see um, kind of how it cleans up going down. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. It's a Absolutely. great night, and to be here and experience this the way I am. Yeah, it's almost as not not to do this. Yeah. I didn't want to. I wanted to hold any sports reference. Well, yeah, while I was doing do this, the same thing. But it's almost yeah. a sports atmosphere here yeah. where people are having a great time. They're engaged, and right. there's a lot of emotion in the room. Right, and, it, and it's nice to see people come out and get excited about. Something that really matters, not the Steelers football doesn't matter. Keep your yeah. cards and letters to yourself. <laughs> but, you know, this is what really matters. And to see, we have a packed room here. And it's been uh, um, it's been a good night. And, um, yeah, I, Chris Basher, thank you so much for taking hey, the time. Thank you so much for, for giving me the opportunity. All right, I appreciate have you. Have a great one. All right, we're, gonna, we're going to uh, clean up a couple of things here on our way out. Um, so some updated numbers that we have um, in the Connor Lamb Keith Rothfuss uh, race, forty percent of the precincts reporting uh, Lamb holds a sixty-one to thirty-eight percent lead over Keith Rothfuss, and uh, this was the title fight that we were all thinking was going to happen. Uh, so much so that we broke out, we broke the Photoshop budget. Uh, we got some <laughs> stock photos, and we we really knocked that one out of the park. Um, the other race, this, there's a state senate race, uh, Lindsey Williams versus Republican Jeremy Schaefer. Now, Jeremy Schaefer came seemingly out of nowhere. He's a Ross Township commissioner. He defeated in what many call, what, you know, what I call, a pretty dirty race in the spring against uh, uh, Randy Velakovich, a Republican actually who could be talked to um, from the other side of the aisle. Um, and their campaign got pretty dirty going down the, the line. On the Jeremy Schaefer side, Lindsey Williams, um, I think, really, really did well in those coming in those in those waning weeks. Um, in the other big state house race, uh, Speaker of the House Republican Mike Terzai is leading Emily Skopoff, fifty-five percent to forty-four percent. That's just fourteen percent of the votes. Uh, fourteen percent of the votes reporting, and I'm going to we're going to check back in one more time on this children's uh the children's fund referendum and currently that that is it's still a toss-up we've got 57 percent of precincts reporting 
and uh, there's a, a very slight 50.3% to 49.6% on that. One and more final interesting stat in this segment from uh, my colleague Lindsay. Straight party vote so far tonight. Democrats, 68% of Democrats are voting straight party tickets. Republicans, 30% of Repo- only of Republicans are voting straight party. So that's how a, a candidate like a Connor Lamb, like a Dan Smith Jr. Uh, against you know up there in Butler County, those are the kinds of voters that are going to turn those seats. So we are live at local bar and kitchen, Pittsburgh Current, along with the Pittsburgh Incline election night watch party. We will be back shortly with more updates. If you're in the ra- in the area, come on down, food, drinks, and we'll talk some politics.